Hello, everybody. I come to you with Stop. urgent Stop. news. Stop. Why are you breaking open up, news? Why are you going to open the podcast up completely different than you have ever in the breaking entire existence? News. Okay, okay, just go. We have just been informed mm-hmm. the head coach Seth Luttrell has been relieved of his duties at the University of North Texas. Yeah. Effective immediately, I'm being told. Yep. Yes. Can't confirm. Um, here we are, Colin. Here yeah. we are. Emergency podcast. We got the green on. We're ma- matching shirts. Basketball. Oh, they the same North shirts? Texas. I didn't even. I didn't yeah. even yeah. Sorry. It was not on purpose. It's okay. It's all right. Here we it are. It was this to the basketball hoodie, you know? It's all right. Um, here we are, Colin. Yep. Seth Luttrell has been fired at North Texas. This is this is all I know, okay? I want everybody to understand that. Seth Luttrell is all I know. I wasn't here for the McCartney uh, year. I wasn't. Seth Luttrell is all I've known. Years. Um, but... Yeah, years. Whatever. This is all I know, and so this is the end of an era for me. Um, but I'm here joined by Colin Mitchell, who just continues to spew... Yeah, awful like, takes do on I got, Twitter. Do I got stuff on my shirt? Dude, Colin, you are Gosh, a mess, man. That's, that's bad is, of me. Yeah, this is disgusting. That's poor. But I am... I am... Sorry, I'm reading Twitter now. But anyways, Colin, uh, it's happened. I don't know. Do we, we want to give our, our takes on it or we want to... Yeah, uh, what yeah, do you want to I mean, start? How do you want to start? We, I think we got to go on to this, but first, I need to apologize to my man, North Texas Eagle. I tweeted damn right. Out, you damn right. You I, should be I, ashamed I, of yourself. I, I should listen. I Look, tweet what I, I I'll read it. I'll read. I'll read. Like, shout out. Know. Shout out. Go mean green. The shout forums. out. Go mean green. Shout, shout out. All out go them. mean green. All right. Look, I told Colin. I was like, why? Why did you send that? That's not. <laughs> it's, what did I say? I said, not exactly trying just to like piss people off. Now, what do you? No, no. You said you said Colin firing shots at Twitter on Twitter, and he says. And I was like, it wasn't, it was basically, I saw T, what is it? TX football life. What's that? So I saw that and that's what I tweeted about, but I was driving. So I didn't obviously like think anything of it. And then, you know, North Texas Eagle got added as he should have, because, you know, a little ambiguous there, but uh, yeah, you know, I just got to apologize to my man because obviously uh, don't say my man, don't say my man after you disrespected him, so disrespected I, him. I, all right, will, JD. I, JD, he doesn't speak for me. He doesn't speak for this podcast. He speaks on his own. I, I liked your tweets. Colin Mitchell is canceled. Colin Mitchell Cancel is canceled. Me. He is yep. canceled. And my shirt. Man, that's bad. I was in a different shirt and I changed into this. That's crazy. I know. That's crazy. All right. <laughs> Anyways, where do we start? Look, look, we'll talk we'll, yeah, we'll talk Seth. We'll talk Seth. We'll talk Seth. Well, where do we start? Where do we start? I'm not going to lie. My mind is kind of scrambling right now. But it has. I, but as a podcaster, you have to be able to adapt. take all that and mm. you know put it into. Well, being... here's here's where we left off. Okay. We left off the UTSA game. Yes, I said after the UTSA game that I think you should be fired after the game. You said that you should wait for the bowl game, wait till the AD comes in, and I agreed with that as well because obviously there's no AD, and uh, we see now that you don't get an AD. Clearly, they weren't the they weren't happy that. Seth didn't win the UTSA game, and Jared Mosley's name interim AD, and Seth is gone. And that's that is where we are at this point at eight fifty six p.m. In case anything else breaking happens. Um, and, what was the tweet? Uh, he had to win eight games this year. Uh, this yeah. So uh, I believe it was Brett McMurphy said that he was about he was going to get fired last year after that awful look, start. Rattles off five wins. Yeah, sorry. And that's what kept him his job. He had to win eight games this year, which we get, which we assumed. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um. I talk to people, believe it or not, I know people as well um, at North Texas somehow, mm. you know, st- stay in touch. I try to call people, try to try to have yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about your sources here. Look, <laughs> there's a lot that I hear that I don't say, Colin. Okay. I, I tell you, but I don't tell, I don't tell anybody. It's I, I don't cover the team. It's not, you know, it's not my job to. to it's not your that. place. You know? It's not my place. There's, there's better people um, like my man, JD, that you called out doing the work of, mm out there so shout out to them but i don't get it confused i talk to people we 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 know things all right we know plenty so last summer i heard the same thing pretty much um i heard obviously that they were very very close to pulling the trigger last year the five wins saved him his job 
uh, we come, I mean, we come on the podcast or no, it wasn't even you. It was uh, me and uh, John last year. We're yeah. like, I mean, yeah, it saved him his job. They go and lose the bowl game. You know, how much of a win really is it? The UTSA win definitely saved him his job. So we come into this year and I went back and listened to our, our preseason podcast. We are like, all right, got to win a bowl game. Got to get seven wins, you know, and to this point, he's got the seven wins, right? But if you look at the big picture of North Texas football, I can't see how people, or if there are people, how they don't understand this decision. Now, I will admit, and I said this on the last podcast, it will, it will look funny to people outside of the circle. Yeah, it will. It just will. Because I just saw a tweet. I think it was PFF or somebody tweeted it. I said, Seth Trail has been fired in North Texas after making the conference championship game. Yeah. And that's and that's that was your counterpoint to me saying he should get fired after the UTSA game. I said just wait till he gets yeah. blown out by I said Air Force at the time. Now it's gonna be Boise State. Just <laughs> wait till they get blown out of Boise State and then do it. You save yeah. face, it's easier. Yeah, they didn't want it to be easier. All right. And also, well, with, there's so much to talk about here. There's so much to talk about, but put this on the back burner burner as well. Coaches are moving. The carousel yeah. is in mo- complete motion at this point. So that just leave on the back burner. We'll get back to that later. If you're not in the circle at North Texas, if you don't follow North Texas on a regular basis, this might look funny to you. If you're watching this podcast and you don't know anything about North Texas, except maybe you're like, I don't know, a fan of an AAC team. You're trying to figure out what happened at North Texas because they're coming into your conference. I can understand why it doesn't make sense. They just made the conference championship game. And I saw that I saw that earlier in the year, too. Uh, somebody say that. But if you have been following this team, it makes all the sense in the world. The writing was on the wall, like you said. This has been a this should this could have happened last year. They gave him another chance. They said, you know what? Hit eight wins and and we we'll be able to ride with you, which our that was kind of our sentiment, right? This was a prove it year. A hundred percent. This was a prove it year. He needed to come out and win seven games in a bowl. You know, he needed to come out and exceed expectations for once. He needed to um, take advantage of this last year in Conference USA and win the, a damn championship, which is he, which has been his um, his downfall at North Texas. Right, he's had some regular season success, yeah, albeit you know there's been some terribly disappointing years, but you know he's had those. He's got to some championship games. He's got some decent bowl games against good teams. And it's just been loss after loss after loss. I don't know if you have Gabe Brooks' tweet up. Shout out my man Gabe. Oh, yeah. Let me get that You can pull his tweet up while I'm talking, and then I'll let you read it all off. But he did a great job summarizing. But this is not anything new. This is something we've repeated on this podcast for years and years and years. They cannot win the games that matter. Yeah, and speak those games that matter, 0-7 in the postseason, 0-5 in bowls, 0-2 in conference championship games, 13 consecutive FBS non-conference losses, which is an insane stat to me. Insane. 11 consecutive G5 non-conference losses. So you take out your Power 5 schools. And then obviously we can go back to, you know, in-conference games. Uh, we talk about uh, La Tech in 2018, um, ODU away, UAB away that same year. Mm-hmm. I mean... The big games, that's been our thing the whole time. And, and, you, and you've been saying the last three weeks, one and a half wins is all they've had. Exactly. So, um, and furthermore, I want to reiterate, again, this, I, I want to paint a broad stroke to our audience. I don't just want to talk to North Texas fans because I think maybe more people will listen to this. But um, So you have those stats, all right? Yep. More context to those stats we talked about last podcast is that they aren't even close in a lot of these games that matter. They get blown out consistently. You look at the FAU championship game. You look at bowl game Troy, bowl game App State, and you go down the list of games. Even Miami, Ohio, didn't they lose by? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking all that up right now. Okay, uh, for you. But it's just year after year. UAB this year, UTSA this year. It's like you go into these games and you need this team to elevate. You need this program to elevate. And North Tech and Seth Luttrell has not been the guy to do that. Yeah, and, um, Miami, Ohio, 27-14. You don't score in the second half. Exactly. I mean, and that's Miami, Ohio. Like, Boise State is going to is gonna run them off the field. So you're looking at another year of 7-7. Seven and seven. They, he, he gets fired in his uh, career record at North Texas is 44-44. and 44. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, and that, that's, and that, that's that, how that, it that, feels. Exactly. Mediocrity. I mean, what's, 40, what's more mediocre than being 500 through seven years, you know? And, and again, I want to repeat – 
which I've said multiple times on prior podcast. Yeah. Seven and seven might look or six and six, seven and five. Again, to the outside eye, it's like you're asking for to be, to do better than seven and five, and you're North Texas. How can you do that? That makes no sense. Look at who they've played on the schedule. Look at the context behind these games, yep. and you will figure out the resume is not as impressive as it seems. The 44 wins on his resume are not as impressive as they seem. They're yeah. not. This was the year he had to take a step forward in a bad Conference USA. Like This year was one of the worst Conference USA bad. years I can remember. Yeah. You have UAB falling over itself without, um, it's, with Bill Clark gone. You have Western Kentucky that's like, Good and bad, but obviously coming down off of ba- Bailey's Zappi year. You have UTSA that is the only solidified good team, and everybody else is trash. Rice, La Tech, FIU, FAU even to a degree, trash. And you win against the bad teams, hardly convincingly against Rice, let's remember. You have one impressive win on the entire year in Western Kentucky. You have a half a good win against FAU at home. It's not enough. Like it's not. And if and again, I will, I'm just going to continue to repeat myself. If they played the American schedule that they have next year, this year, they are not even winning half of their eight games in that conference. Yeah, they would have gone three and five at best, at best. And so you take all that into consideration, and you take into consideration 2021, where they were 01 and six team, and then you take into account 20. 20 where they were four and six 2019 they were four and eight it's 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 obvious i'm sorry yeah. it's obvious the trajectory of this program was not on the incline the trajectory of the program was like this and conference USA went like this and now next year you're gonna go into the american and it goes to this yeah and that's it yep. it's easy it's obvious we've said it on this podcast for the entire year we said it last year it's I, man, and it sucks. I, I'll you're let you fired talk. Up. I, I, you're I, fired up. No, I promise you I'll let you talk. I promise you. I'm sorry. No, but keep going. I, you can't continuously under-deliver and hold on to a year where you went 4-5 and five and made a bowl game. You went 5-7 and seven and made a bowl game and lost those games, by the way. Went 6-6 six and six and made a bowl game. And then you, the two years you had all the talent in the freaking world for a Conference USA level team, I should say. You win nine. You don't win a conference championship. You lose to Old Dominion after being up twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. I'm going back in the damn archives, Colin. I'm going I back right because here. I remember I got it right here. I remember that those year. games. I remember that game against Old Dominion where they were up twenty eight and lost. I remember it. Yeah. And now I just had to another championship game where they get blown out. Yep. Two days ago, yesterday. No, two days ago, Friday. Friday. And and it's it's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's it. You and can I think he's a good offensive coach. And I it sucks because I really, really like the guy. Man, if I I had multiple conversations with him over summer, man. We did Wish a podcast. Good with luck. Him. And I I yeah, we had a podcast with him. He comes on our podcast. Like I I try not to be fake or phony. I, I just try to tell it how it is. And we, me and Seth have talked about that. Maybe it rubs in the wrong way sometimes. But I, I love I like the guy, man. Yeah. And it sucks he's gone, but it sucks it didn't work out, but it's obvious. It's just obvious. Yeah, and uh I talked about this last podcast. You're going to the uh the AAC with teams that are making moves as well. So you have to compare yourself to the FA who just got Tom yep. Herman. You have to compare yourself to the UAB who despite going 6 and 6 with an interim head coach, got a different coach because it wasn't good enough USF for them. just USF just hired Tennessee's offensive coordinator as well. USF just did that. So now you're going to you have to live up to that as Tulane well. Re, Tulane retained its coach that was getting courted otherwhere, but sorry. Yeah. Ahead. Yeah, so so you have to live up to that and you have to change the perception at the same time because what's your perception going into that conference? It's going to be you have a lot of talent but you can't win the big games. And if your big games are considered SMU Memphis and you're going to be playing those types of team every single week, you you need you need you need a change somewhere, and that's got to be at the top if you haven't been able to do it up to this point. Um, so, I mean, I, I think, like you said, it's going to look weird from the outside looking in, but once people's people's eyes are on it, because obviously, you know, coaching candidates or whatever, they're going to finally understand. And you know, we haven't even got to we haven't even got to. So that's all that's all our context. Yeah. Of, of on yeah. the field results. Yeah. That makes sense of this, in my in our opinion, right? That's that's the on field stuff that makes sense of this. Um, if you look off the field, 
what we what have we said multiple times? North Texas is uh, in the Conference USA was had the best resources. In yep. Conference USA was was the highest paid head coach. In Conference USA had was probably in the best recruiting area of any team. I'm trying to think FAU is down there. Or FIU is in Miami, but you know FIU and is whatever. Um, but and we saw what FAU yeah. could do with the head coach, right, Lane Kiffin. Yeah, so yeah. That it, if you get a coach, and I'm not saying they have to hire Lane Kiffin for God's sakes, but if North Texas has the resources and has had the resources that Conference USA schools have not had. I mean, like you said last week or two, two days ago, Jeff Trailer, with minimal resources, has been ranked two times in a row, 22 ranked this week. Yep. I mean, like that, you, stop there. It's That's not it. even. <laughs> yeah, it's not even on. It's not even just on the field. It's the fact that North Texas is continuing to grow, continuing to pour money into the football program. It has an incredibly nice stadium, incredibly nice indoor facility has continued to um, with, even with Rim Baker gone, I'm sure they'll continue the 20 year plan where they will continue to pour money into the athletics and everybody else around North Texas has taken advantage. Uh, I'm sorry. Everybody else around the football program has taken advantage of that. Right. Yep. Basketball, softball, softball basketball. I mean, yeah. every, soccer, like everybody else has taken advantage of that except for Seth. Seth yep. was unable to take advantage. And I understand it's a different sport, but you, he was not able to take advantage of those of those resources. Now you are going into the American where you're going to be competing with SMU, right? You're going to be competing with Tulane, who's down here in New Orleans that has talent coming out of their ears as well. At some point, you have to make the most of the resources you're working with. I just never felt like Seth was doing that. And yeah. so now how am I going to ask him – out of the goodness of my heart, how am I going to ask him to go to the American and be like, okay, well, you couldn't do this at the Conference USA level, but just like do it at the American level. Yeah. Like just no, go, be, right. go be Tulane. What would the score of Tulane have been this year? What would the score – I mean, the SA – like it would have been the SMU, SMU game. We it would have been, been the SMU, SMU game. game except worse. Yeah. Like, I, 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 and I understand Rice is coming with them to Conference USA – or to, to the American. Cool. FAU is coming with them to the American. Cool. But so is UAB. So is UTSA. Like this is – it's it's just it's time. It was painfully obviously it was time for a change both on the field and when you look at what North Texas is doing off the field as far mm-hmm. as the money that they're putting into us into it and the resources they have and the recruiting base that they have in North Texas, for God's sakes, Denton Geyer and Denton Ryan are two of the preeminent high school programs in the freaking state, if not country. Yeah. And I'm not saying they have to go get Jatavian Sanders from Denton Ryan, but Jesus Christ. There's so much to work with here. I completely understand the situation of let's try to go find a guy that can capitalize on all of this because Seth had his shot, man. You can't say Seth was dealt a bad hand. He had seven years. He was the longest tenure coach in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. that that's for, for all that. Um, that that's where I'm at. Yeah. You went crazy for like the last 12 minutes. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, you are talk. you okay? You look yeah, lightheaded. You can talk. You can talk. You look- this is, but look, man. Well, okay. Is... Well, well, ahead, look, I think. I think. <laughs> yeah, you were about to go crazy again. You took a took a mini sip of water. Was about to go crazy. I think, with with all that was said just now, I think we need to break it down into what it means going into the bowl game, what it what what they need to be looking for in a head coach, and I guess the timing. Um, because I think a lot, let's start with the timing actually, because I feel like a lot of people might bring up outside of the outside looking in record wise. Why not just wait till after the bowl game, like you said? And I, obviously, I I was of the, the mind get it done get it done and over with now. But for well, you, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Well, th- there's obviously the aspect of it. If nothing else, you fire him after another embarrassing postseason loss. Like yeah. that that makes sense. Um, I was just saying wait for it because they're probably gonna lose the bowl game. Right. But if you don't want to make that bet that they somehow win the freaking bowl game and then you have to fire him. Like then it would be weird, I guess maybe yeah. I personally, if I'm an athletic director, I wouldn't give a damn if he beat Boise state probably still yeah. would have been done. Uh, but this does save you from that. If you are Jared Mosley uh, and uh, Niels mattress, and you want to just be done with it. And then you go back to the timing. What did I say earlier? Let's pull that off the back burner and put it in, in the middle here. The coaches are moving. Yep. Yep. Coaches are moving. What did we say? USF hire. U, uh, FAU hire. Colorado hires Dion. Coaches are moving. It's yep. time to go. You can't wait two weeks because then 
two weeks of either missing out on candidates, being indecisive, you know, who yeah. knows at that point. You're picking you from a thinner going. herd. Exactly. You got to get going. So that that's from a timing aspect. I think this makes complete sense um, to, 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 to end it. Yeah. Um, and then I, how, how do we, what, what are you looking for in the next head coach? Obviously we've seen that Seth Knape was able to recruit to an extent. He's able to have the explosive offense. Um, what are you looking for in, in your eyes? Like, do you, are, are you looking for big name or are you looking for, that's the matter? question. Right. Yeah. Do you go the FAU route of t- hiring Tom Herman? Do you yeah. go the USF route of hiring the Tennessee offensive coordinator? Yeah. That's and- going to be a really, really interesting question because I think for a long time, or at least I'll, I'll speak, Seth the Trout obviously coming over as a coordinator is something that you would expect from a conference USA school. Um I'm trying to think, and I, I don't have. Well, a don't list. get me wrong. When Seth was hired, it was very exciting because he just come off the national championship game with UNC. Was it a national championship? Well, he I'm didn't. Sure. UNC did not make a national championship. Was it? Was game. it? Was it a semifinal? No, UNC didn't make a semifinal. I probably swear made a, they did. Probably made a co- like not a combo. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. New Year's Six Bowl. North Carolina never made a, the Final Four. I'll, I'll tell you that. But regardless, Seth Luttrell was the in, was an offense was a young offensive coordinator that had a lot of you know, mojo behind him. If you look at these pictures from when he was hired in 2015, he doesn't even look like the same guy, um, which speaks to how long he's been the head coach here. Yeah. Um, and so you do wonder, I will say, I don't think you can go young and unproven again. Sorry. It was the AC, ACC championship game okay. against Clemson. That's what it was. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it, it, it would, sh- it would surprise me if they went with another Seth Luttrell because, and I, I'll give Seth a little bit of credit on this, even though I think this was just a natural progression of this program, is that this program is on very different footing than it was in 2015. Yeah. Very, very different footing. And I think a lot of that is natural progression of um, having more money, having better resources, having better facilities, um, having better leadership, in my opinion. Uh, Ren Baker was huge for this. I mean, obviously, uh, school and athletic department as a whole getting off the ground. But, you know, now you have a basketball program that is – thriving every single year, putting them on the map a little bit. It's just a, it's a very, very different job um, as perceptually than it was in 2015 when you're coming off a one and fifth, one and 11 season with Dan McCartney and, and you know how that goes. So um, yeah, I, I think you have to be looking a little bit more established. Um, personally, I think, I know some people were kind of digging on USF for oh, that hire of the offensive corner from Tennessee. Personally, I'm like, Offensive corner of Tennessee. Yeah. Offensive, okay, North yeah. Texas. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take the offensive corner from you know, yeah. freaking D. Uh, okay. Um, and obviously, I know Josh Hypo at Tennessee runs a lot of their stuff uh, as far as an offensive mind goes, but still, you're getting offensive corner from Tennessee. So I say all that because if if North Texas can get a P, uh, I don't, I don't want to say P5, I want to say like a top 20, a, a coordinator from a top 25 team. Are you saying no to that? I'm not saying no to that. Yeah. Like no. as long as they're as long as they obviously have done have you know done their uh, you know gone up the ladder and done all the the hard work and everything and they've proven themselves to a degree or maybe they've been a head coach at a smaller school and gone up but I think this is this is what North Texas is and this a this is what almost ninety five percent of programs are is that you are a stepping stone but who it's it's who you're a stepping stone for you know what mm-hmm. I mean are you yep. a stepping stone like FAU for Lane Kiffin and Tom Herman. Or are you going to be like the USF and hire the Tennessee coordinator who's trying to get into the head coaching ranks? Neither one is wrong, and I don't think either one is like, you know, there's not a study being done like, oh, you have to hire Tom Herman or else you're going to suck. No, yeah, you, you can figure it out. But um, if you did hire a guy like like Garrett Riley, I know everybody loves Garrett Riley, the offense coordinator at TCU. But um, you know, if you did get a name like that, I would be thrilled, absolutely thrilled. So. I don't really have a strong opinion as to like if they should go for the Tom Herman or mm-hmm. the Gary Riley. I just um, I think they're in a lot better of a position here. So I am confident. I'm a lot more confident here going into it that they're that they're going to be able to make a, a right the right decision or a right decision. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with you. I think it, I think it really just comes down to making sure you maintain that perception of that natural progression you've gotten up to this point, um, you know, making sure that you continue to show that you're a growing program and show that perception. You're not just a rice coming in to the AAC for a coach. So uh, I think that's, 
probably my most important thing where you like uh, the UAB move UAB, like I said, had that success through the season with their interim head coach, but wanted to make a, a hire for the future where they didn't just predicate themselves on defense, hard football because they need, they need to look, they need to look attractive. Yeah, it is. Um, and North Texas needs to maintain that as well. Yeah. North Texas Eagle tweeted Colin. Do you know? Oh, did he, did he tweet at me? Yeah. <laughs> That's yes so good. that's so good yes that's so good all right <laughs> Colin. Like that. public enemy number one now i cannot be seen with you in public it's a shame a shame it's a shame um what else what else what else i think we've covered everything um I'm trying to think what other people would be saying or would 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 be asking at this point um some people were saying you know why not just fire him last year and uh to those you, you can't you can't do that to those people um i would say if if you have this if you're in the situation that north texas is in where you have one more year left in conference usa and you're trying to get to the american and you're assessing all options going to the american and your team did just win five games in a row you think maybe there can be some positive momentum building up i personally would have kept him as well probably yeah and just to see um just to see what would have happened. And also if like at that point, it's a mutual agreement, right? I think Seth, the trail knew, Hey, I need to step up or else I'm going to get canned. Ren Baker and Neil Smatris are like, Hey, you better win eight games this year. And because we need, we need something of substance. We need positive momentum going into the American. And again, positive momentum does not come by winning one and a half games. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. It just the UTEP win holds zero weight. Rice win holds zero weight. Texas Southern zero weight. Western Kentucky though that one that one is legit. So, with all that being said, I think we've covered all of our bases. Um, anything else we got here? Uh, I mean, you you covered everything. Um, I, I yelled for a while. I'm sorry. Do you have anything else though? No, to add I, I mean I don't think so. I can't think of anything. Feel like feel like I say I say most of my stuff post the post game and then you just kind of you kind of do your you're plugged in you know i'm not i'm plugged in <laughs> yeah well like you understand like because you cover lsu you understand like a lot more than i do all that uh all that stuff um i feel like 27 minutes isn't doing this justice though no i feel like it is i feel like it's it is to a degree um 4 and 15 versus non-g5 <laughs> non-conference g5 foes 2 and 14 versus G- <laughs> Gabe even had Gabe even had not named Army G five non conference foes two and fourteen <laughs> just a whole another layer to that one the Love only it. close bowl game the only close bowl yeah, game the only close bowl game and um, lost that one too um, yeah I I just I I go back to I I don't think we should keep this much longer personally but like I just keep going back to what I've yelled about time and time again you're going into the American mm-hmm. you have a chance to reset. You have a chance to assess your options in the coaching carousel. Maybe, who knows? Maybe Neil and Ren had someone in mind. They were like, hey, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can go check out this guy. I'm sure they have a whole – well, I know they had a list last year. And then, you know, then all of this, you know, they win and everything. They're like, all right, we'll come back. So they they can pull that out the drawer. You know, they're going to pull it out and be like, hey, we got the list here. <laughs> and, but um, I think I'm interested – here's some, uh, something real quick. I'm interested to see how much money they will throw at a new coach. Because that's true. If Seth's already was already Seth the highest was paid, at, Seth was at like you know, let's say two million. Let's round up for two million after bonuses yeah. worth pretty much two. If it was two, you're going to the American, you know, inflation and stuff, Colin. Yeah, in this I, economy, Bruni, are they pushing three? I don't. I mean, I don't know. Does two get you? Does two even get you another Seth? You know, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I <laughs> yeah. Listen, wait. Yeah, yeah. When my milk is five dollars a gallon, I don't even know what it actually is. You get listen. You know, that's 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 what these coaches are thinking about. They're not thinking about. You know, they're trying to they're trying to put food on the table. Let's see. Did con did, did uh Tom Herman's contract come out? I don't. Oh, see that's a good it. question. Actually, I don't see it. I wonder if he's still getting paid from Texas, damn it. Um, maybe, maybe. Yeah, UT paid a $15.4 million buyout to get 
out of the three three remaining years of his contract after he signed extension to 2023, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, yeah. But anyways, yeah, that uh, I think that covers it. We'll be interested to see what jobs they um, – or who they are linked to in this process um, because I think you – I don't want to say you have to get someone with high state area because that's dumb, but you have to get someone that can recruit the area. I think obviously. Yeah. And that comes with every single job. Now, the funny part is, you know, Seth Patel did recruit for those like three years in a row and then kind of just gave up the last two years, not gave up, changed his strategy the last two years, you know, went a little bit more transfer junior college type stuff. Um, But it's going to be interesting to see how they, how they, uh, bounce or who they look at for this job that's what i'll say yeah all right anything else on twitter anything else before we go uh no i mean i'm just getting flamed it's okay though damn damn right again i i I, I said i deserve it i'm not shying away you know that's good that's good maybe Maybe next time or maybe just at the person you're talking about instead of leaving a vague tweet out there since you want to be confrontational colin go ahead and at them or quote tweet them just, just, just direct, directly. You might DM well. too. Yeah, I mean, it would save us the trouble of having to it fight would, off everybody in the damn North Texas Metroplex. I mean, it's okay. Like I said, I deserve it. It's fine. I can't. What I can't believe is that you said I should have deleted my tweet pre yeah. before we started the show. He said you didn't delete your tweet yet. I was like, why would I delete it? Well, that- now you should delete it. Now that you've addressed it, I think at this point, right? <laughs> just, just, just. That no, would be crazy. You think is I that didn't... not rational? No, let it, it's let not it rational live. to delete a tweet after you. Re... Bro, listen, no, I... you let it live. You let it live. So, no. so it's so it's so I can it's so I can reference it. No, you know, no. no. Everybody got the picture of you trying to be messy on the timeline. Messy on the timeline. Trying to be messy, spit like you yeah, know. No, come on now, come on. You can delete it. We can go home. We can. That's enough. And also, all you damn UTSA fans watching our videos. Y- y'all did not fire Seth the Trail. You didn't. All right. What? That's Seth, the trail, Seth the Trail fired Seth the Trail. <laughs> that's the thing. That, that's the thing that's being said. Well, no, it's just, no, you know, all them. It's like you at UTSA broke North Texas and stuff like that. Oh, I yeah, guess no. in theory, if they would have won both the games against UTSA, then yes, then maybe we'd be talking about that. But uh, no, this is years, years, years in, the making. in the making here. Okay. Don't, then don't, stewing. don't take credit to, for two days ago beating North Texas. All right. When a Seth Latrell knew he was gone, probably at that point. But yeah, he probably he got done with the game and was like, "All right, <laughs> we're packing or, up or right now." He knew. Like that's another interesting thing about the eight wins is that a I don't know, but b it's like, did he go into it being like, "All right, I have to win the conference championship and the bowl game," because that's kind of what we say. <laughs> yeah. To a lesser degree, we were like, you know, you got to win a damn championship at some point, and that's why. All of this just comes back to just not delivering. It just didn't – it wasn't enough, and I, I'm i going to miss Seth. Hopefully we can get the next coach on our podcast. Mm. You know, I'll make some calls, Colin. Don't worry. Thanks. Thanks. Plugged in, Bruni. Plugged in, Bruni, over here. Um, We'll keep this oh, thing rolling. Oh, hot chip. I can't wait for the hot chip. I have to order it still, yeah. When's the bowl game? December 17th? 17th. You got okay. two weeks. Um. Okay, yeah, we have to decide because I don't know if uh if I'm coming in for the game or not. Can I throw out That's a cool. funny hypothetical? Sure. What would happen if they won the Boise State game? Nothing. You would. What do you want to happen? What do you think no, should happen? No, 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 no. Like how? Like how ironic would it be? Oh, they win their was, first postseason game. Was, they win. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Would be very North Texas like. Who do you th- who do you think will be interim? <laughs> Phil Bennett? Bletch. It's gotta be Bletch. Phil Bennett, he don't want to deal with this shit. It'd be so funny. Phil, Phil, Phil Bennett, Phil Bennett, Phil Bennett there's no it. way Phil Bennett wants to deal with anything right now. He's going back into retirement, probably. You think Phil's just Phil's already gone? You think Phil's just like he's gotta be, man. I'm like, okay, well, he's gonna coach through the, he's 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 a coach, you know, he's a coach's yeah, coach. Yeah, he's yeah, coach no, for sure. Game, for sure. Because he, <laughs> after this, though, he's he's set. He's going to go back on his porch, just like when Seth said he called him and Phil was on his por- rocking chair out there, you know. Phil's going to go back to that. He'll be set, man. He, and mm. shout out Phil Bennett, you know. You did your best. But this was a situation where I'll never forget when I first talked to Phil Bennett and he was like, you know, they got the offense. They just got to 
they just need to teach the defense like fundamentals and just do the basics and this and that. And I did that bail and all this stuff. I was like, all right, man, cool. Couldn't save his friend. Couldn't couldn't save Seth, but that's all right. Um, I, I assume Blush. I assume I assume Matt, uh, Mike Blush would be the mm. interim. Patrick Cobbs, popular. Mm. Who knows? Jeff Saturday can get a coaching job. Why can't you know? Hey, if, Jeff, if Jeff's if Jeff Saturday and Dan Campbell, all they do is probably like call up and be like, "Yo, I think you should try." Call Neil. Hold on, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Hold on, restart the podcast. Restart the podcast up. Damn, I, I know Jared Mosley, but I don't know him like I knew Rin. Yeah, you can just, you just call up, Jared. Like, hey, yeah. What's your pitch? What's your pitch? Jared, listen to me. Jeff Jeff Saturday's over there. I mean, they're losing to the Cowboys right now, but they they're playing right now on Sunday Night Football and look like a competent team. Mm. All right, me. And I, I'm in Katie Davis's ear. You know, I, me and Katie are boys. <laughs> Not really. Don't take it seriously. But I think we can get this done. Hire me as the next interim head North Texas football coach for the bowl game against Boise State. And I promise you, we will not lose as badly as Seth Luttrell did in his bowl games. <laughs> that is my promise to you, Jared you Mosley. Print the shirts. Practice. Print the shirts. We won't lose as bad. <laughs> Like we won't lose, and then it's lose small by small. less. L-B-L. Lose by less. That's my motto. That's my. You got you got T high, it. let it fly, and you got L B L. Lose, lose by, by less. lose respectably. Lose respectably. Okay, that's what we will do under Matthew Bruni head coaching. Um, we will be respectable, and we will fight and lose ultimately. But that's nothing new. All right, that's it. That's all we got. Um, next podcast, like I said last time, will probably be basketball, unless they hire somebody in the next few days which they actually wouldn't be surprised they move relatively quickly quickly in this process um so we'll see that'll probably be the next podcast we do we'll probably do a basketball podcast at some point uh and then the bowl preview since the bowl game's on the 17th against boise state um i don't know what the spread is at this point i assume it to be over seven which i saw a projection was at ten and a half mm. we'll see how that goes but yeah transfer portal will pop off probably in north texas players will leave they were going to have a lot of attrition this year anyways, but it is what it is, so we'll see. Why did That's... why did Brett McMurphy say North Texas targets for next coach? Because he was statement? joking. It was I know that. But satire. It's, it's not It's not a good joke. It's not funny? No. Only you can joke on Twitter, Colin? Is that what I, it is? I mean, I wasn't joking, for being honest. <laughs> All right, that's it. We'll stop rambling. Sorry. Um, but that's all we got for y'all today. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, shout out Seth Luttrell, <laughs> even though, you know, he was fired and didn't work out. Appreciate it. Thanks for everything that you did for North Texas. Thanks for the time you gave to me and to Colin. Mm. And um, yeah, we'll we'll stay in touch. We'll we'll see where he is, his next landing spot is because I think he can be an offensive coordinator at a lot of places. Oh yeah, for sure. There's a lot of places he can be an OC. So we'll see. All right, that's it. Leave us a like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, thank you all for watching our videos. We now have two videos that over a thousand, Colin. And this what's is the, what's first the first one. Uh, I don't remember. I, I but I looked through and I, I saw another one. I was like, "Hey, eh, we have two. and we just started wow. this YouTube page like a year ago, less than, less I mean, than what, a year ago in August, J- July, August. July, something like that. So, anyways, we appreciate all the support, um, and we will talk to y'all later. Take it easy.